Hey everybody, Brandon here, and today we're going to start going over the form buttons or the form elements in Open Element. The first one is a form button. Now this is the submit, the cancel, whatever you want it to be, whatever option you want it to be. So for this sake, actually we're going to make a few of these. You'll see why in a little bit because a button is used for more than it's used for a lot. Uh, how many do I need? I'll just do one more in case. All right, so you select the button, you come over here to name under properties, and you give it a name. So we'll say submit. Oh man, I will just submit one for the name. The text down here is where we'll say submit, and that way the submit will come on the button. This one, again, will be, well, this one we'll call submit two, but it'll be. Submit two. So we've got two submit buttons. This one. Oh wait. So we we'll call that cancel. All right, those are form buttons, and that's literally what you do. Is you just place the button out there. Um, I believe it has some. Yeah, it does have a few different styles. So you can choose the style of button that you have. You're allowed 44 different styles, so you guys could look through those and choose whichever one that you want it to look like. But the next thing on the list. We're going to come back to these buttons and we're going to use them on some of these items right here. So we're going to go through each of these. The CAPTCHA. Now what this is, you don't see it here, but once we go into the website, oh no, it actually requires internet. It actually has a few letters and numbers here so you actually have to type it in so you know it's not a computer sending you a bunch of um, submitting your form basically and so that's a captcha a checkbox is literally just that it's a box that you check all right um, no styles no templates name checkbox like I said you can rename it Fix values. If you want it automatically checked, you can have it automatically checked, or you can not have it automatically checked. Um, and then you can actually make the rules. You can actually make it a selection required or a selection not required. You know, that way they have to agree to your terms of use or something like that whatever you wanted to make it for um, and you can open the validation rules through the button at the the little validation rules right here so you can open it up and recheck the change of validation rules drop down list is exactly that let's add a couple of rows value you type in let's see let's see the text sent after the validation can be different from the display text I don't know I've all I've done really is enter what the text is here and then say if it's automatically selected or no and I usually don't have it automatically selected so what happens, well I mean the first one's automatically selected regardless, so inside the 
engine it's actually a drop down menu you can make the menu have links each of these will have links too Let's see whenever you select it settings where is it at validation rules so in other words, if it's required to have it selected, that's the whole point of validation rules. Like, well, you know what? That's right. This isn't leak. This is um, form. Sorry, I'm my brain's a little scattered today. I thought we were back in navigation doing drop down menus for that, but I'm sorry. Another is an option list, but that's how you do a drop down. Drop it down, they select one, you can make a required selection. Again, you now this is like email forms that somebody would submit to you. Again, add the text if you want to automatically select it. And save, just like that. Now, a cool thing is you could actually configure how it looks. So you could lay them flat, one in and reposition which side the, the wording or the bullets are that they select so you can choose whichever layout you want you know select the validation rules selection required to make sure that they do select one of them um, I'm going to come back to these two real quick after I pull these this is a text input this is whatever the person on the web types into and this is a multi-line text field in other words you know think of this put this on top that's the subject and there's the body you know just like an email it could actually make email like forms inside of here and have an email form on your website that emails back and forth Actually, it could really could do it like that. I mean, here's the email form, literally. All right, let's get into those. Um, submit form and email form. Put that into here. All right, submit form to an external page. Enter the destination URL wherever it's going to go after the submit's been hit so if they hit submit and you want them to redirect somewhere this is where you would choose their redirect um, methods post or get um, target I do some I did email form on my last one let's see this one right here submit button that's the reason we named the different submit buttons so I know the submit button one is the one that this is going to work with and cancel one is going to be the cancel button do you want to turn on form validation yes in other words I wanted certain ones for the form to actually go through if it's selected so it does require the validation portion to explain target same window or tab So it would be the same windows whenever you move to the next URL, but if you're not moving, you know what, we'll go to images. Okay, and then you select which elements in the body are for the submit. So you can actually have three or four different forms on the same diff same page and they just require different elements. So if the only thing you want to submit from this person is a checkbox and a drop down list, then that's all you do is you select those two and hit next and those two are selected and submit the form to the next page. And that's what the submit form does. The email form emails it to it. So you have a recipient email address you have an email subject, you have a sender email address, um, you have a display of the final message and message window or a web page created. And so, for example, I'll put in an 
email to my video game. Go test. To prevent it from being spam and redeem for email address other than one that you are sending the email to, so. the CC recipient send a return receipt like so you can send a return receipt to them if you want somebody else to receive a message the same message you can do that and return receipt you can say thank you so thank you for registering Oi. Thank you for signing up. Element containing the visitor's email is text input field. And that's where the email from the visitor where they entered their email address comes from. It's from the text input field. And so you select which one. The message um, to display if sending successful, the message has been sent. An error occurred during sending, the message has not been sent. So it actually tells them which one and here's all the different forms now th what these are is these <coughs> how do I explain it all of these are what information is sent in the email body to the person to you um, so whatever they put into these fields is sent to you name of the fields in the email so you can name the actual field so you can say Test one, test, test three, and that's it. And then what happens is whenever they hit the submit button for submitting the email that they set up for you, it actually sends them an automatic email back saying, you know, this or that. You know, you can have it say, oh, you know, your sign up has been accepted or you can say thank you we'll respond to you as soon as we can you know you set up your response emails however you want the last is upload file so they can choose a file and that's where again where you need a submit button because you have to be able to link it to complete predefined See, this is again a validation rule what it requires these are predefined if it requires an email address into it or whatever addition added rules there are for preferred so you can set up a preferred that way um, so tip read only where was it at Should have been away. Oh, come on. So you set up the authorized extensions that are allowed to be imported. Now, in a lot of this, when you start getting into downloading files, you got to have. Uh, server space to store the files that are uploaded to the website and so that's where you got to also know a little bit of coding too so it's going to get a little bit more advanced I'm not quite there but once I do get to the point of because I got to have stuff uploaded to my site through one of my websites so once I get that all figured out I'm going to put it at the end of the elements tutorials, I'm going to be making a, you know, recently learned tutorial, I should say. Um, you know what? We're going to go ahead and take care of just this single element that's in animation at the same time. Google Maps. Real simple process here. Grab it, you drag it out, and it's asking for a Google Maps script. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to head to Google. We're going to go to Map. We'll find Maps. We'll go into Google Maps. There we go. We got a random map. Now what we're going to do, it's down here in the bottom, this little gear. Down here at the very bottom, you're going to select that. Share or embed map. You're going to embed the map and you choose the size. If you want it to be small, if you want it to be large, you choose what size. So what we'll do is we'll actually do a medium, yeah, we'll do a small map. What you do is you highlight this, you copy it. Come back here to open elements, paste, and OK. Now, let's go check out our map. There it is. And it's an interactive map, too. You can zoom in, view larger. Actually, mop opens it up into Google Maps. All done the right way. Like I said, that is something that's very easy to do. So I just wanted to take care of that quick animation element. <coughs> but next is interactive. I'll probably do interactive community. Well, there's not much left. Well, a lot of these are just. All right, we may. I may end up just doing one, maybe two more videos on the elements. We have all our random fields and input fields. I mean, this is where your creativity has got to come into play. Is how you can set up the fields, enter fields, the type in, type, you know, like right now I'm trying to figure out how to do, how to do a series of submit forms into a database for a uh, forum on one of my websites. I know there's got to be a way to do it, that's why I'm working on it, I'm trying it, and, and you know, in the future I'm also going to post up a bunch of uh, tutorials on how I do individual things like that. Especially like there's going to be an individual tutorial on the packs. and Particularly this one because I've been able to figure it out. So until the next time, happy building.